Have you ever seen a 3D file online and thought to yourself, wow, that is so cool. If only I had some way of screwing it to a wall or holding my phone. If so, this is the perfect video for you. My name is Mike, I'm an engineer, and today I'm going to teach you how to remix 3D files. Remixing is when you take an existing file from, for example, Thingiverse and modify it to your needs by adding, removing or altering features of the original. I do this all the time since it's a very quick way of getting great results. The first thing we need to do is to find a file to use. I mostly use Thingiverse where you can find thousands of free to use models, but jeggy.com is also a popular option. Today I'm looking for a fun looking phone holder for my desk. After a bit of browsing, I found this shark model by Zenfire. My plan is to have it come out of the desk straight up like a scene from Jaws. Since the mouth is open, it'll be fairly easy for us to adapt it to hold a phone. I also need to add a base, I think, to make it more stable. Remember to also check the license, because some creators do not want you to modify their work. Always respect that. First off, you need to download the files, of course, and then import into your software. I'm using Fusion 360, which is a free CAD software, but I'm sure most programs that uh, can handle 3D models can do similar things. Start by positioning it and then making it to the correct size. This can be a bit hard, but I usually make a quick sketch with the known dimensions to have something to compare to. In this case, I've made a small block similar to the size of my phone, which will help me, you know, do it right. When you import an SDL into Fusion, it is a mesh and made up of facets, and we need to convert it to a solid, workable format. This can sometimes be hard since Fusion does not like complex models because they take a lot of power to convert a lot of these facets like this. This is one of those models, so we need to simplify it. To start with, I'm going to remove most of the shark's body and only keep what I want. I'll do this by using plane cut in the edit mesh tool. Then I'll use reduce to simplify the mesh if uh, done too much, it'll affect the 3D print, but you can go pretty far without any issue, really. There is no perfect number here, so you need to try it out and see what works for the individual model. To convert the mesh to a normal body, you need to temporarily turn off Design History Capture, like this. Then you go to the mesh and choose to Convert Mesh to B-Rep. Now, even after reducing the complexity, Fusion still asks us if we want to proceed. Yes. Yes, I do. Conversion can take a minute, but it's worth it. I think it usually works out. Alright, we're doing good progress here. Mesh is converted to something that we can work with, and I've already cut it to size. Let's proceed by making the cutout for the phone. Mm, okay, that looks good. It's a slight angle and it's uh, cut the whole way through. Now let's make a base to keep it stable. A hundred millimeters should be enough and a couple millimeters high should give it enough rigidity to keep it stable on my desktop. And a chamfer to make it look a bit better. So let's go ahead and print it. Here is the final result. Potentially a good opportunity for a multicolor print if you have that option. You know, with a blue base and a grey shark. I'm going to paint this probably. Now that I'm happy with the result, I'll upload my version to Thingiverse, remembering to tell the site that this is a rework of the original thing. Happy printing, and if you want more tips and tricks like this, remember to subscribe to this channel.